How are we going, everyone? I finally made it back out to my veggie garden. That's right, I haven't been in here for about, ooh, six weeks, probably. Um, what is it now? We're heading at the end of May. Yeah, mid-April, I think, is the last time I came in here, maybe harvested a little bit, the last week of April. So I've done absolutely nothing in my veggie garden. So all of you out there who are doing wonderful work in your autumn winter range, congrats on that. I've been overworked with other things, so we're going to have a quick look around and see how bad it's been performing without my presence. Um, and what we're going to do today quickly is also clean up this area here. So we're going to start with this bed here. I did plant some broad beans before I walked away, so these are about six weeks old. Um, I don't have any on the end there because we had a cucumber that's gone to heaven. There's actually one cucumber to harvest and a tomato on this end down here that we had. Here we also had endives and there have been three or four years in a row that I've been growing these here, just cutting them back. And I've sort of, you know, I've had enough of them. They've overgrown in their roots. They're actually, they're good to have if you've got the space and yeah, admittedly we've got space because it's a large property, but this bed here is not big enough for them long term. And, you know, I just prefer a fresh ba batch of these ones to go in. So after four years of them, or three and a half years, time to come out. There's the rest of them down there. A couple of more here. And we're going to check the soil once I've done that. Because we want to see if we need to dig this garden bed over, or do we just leave it in there to perform the way it has been on its own. And that really depends on the soil itself. Uh, the condition of the soil. So these are still pretty good roots, although, as I said, I'm going to replant them. Some of you are saying, you're crazy, what did you take them out for? Well, change is good too, you know. Have a look at the uh, uh, beetroot over here. These things down here, I dug them up. Again, some of them grew, some of them didn't. These are the ones that actually, because these were competing against the endives down here, so they were planted right next to it, plus they got hit by leaf spot. Plus, they also got attacked by snails and slugs. And you can see the new ones coming up, but you know what? I've had enough of them. I've got plenty more, by the way. Don't think I'm taking them all out. I'm taking out this row here so I, can don't, so I, don't, so I don't cast too much shadow over the uh, plants that I'm gonna put in here. And what we're putting in here is something even better. I think that's the last of them, I think. Oh, there's one more here. Some of them rotted out. Now, what we're gonna do is inspect the soil and see whether we need to turn it over or not. And the test there is to see how soft it is. If it's gone really super hard, folks, and you can't get your hand into the soil, like dig into it like this, then you need to turn it over and loosen it up. So now I've just grabbed hold of some of these roots. And where are they going? Where are they coming from? We've got all this stuff growing in here. That looks like silver beet roots, really. That's, they're the ones that travel the most. But there's no silver beet in here. Nevertheless, let's just get rid of that. So first test was, can you dig it by hand? Yes, I can. It's friable, it's actually quite dry. I haven't watered this. Uh, actually, I haven't watered it for six weeks. How do you like that? These are coming from somewhere. Wow. All right. I'm not gonna guess what plant this is from, but it's not from the plants in here. This must be some sort of tree that's grown its way through here, grown up. Could be anything. Put that aside. Let's just scratch the surface over and see what's going on down below. And it sounds pretty dry. And it is pretty dry. See that? That's the old saw. So this bed here, I reckon it doesn't need to be turned over. The moss we can dig in, but there's too much, I think, at the moment to dig in. I'm not going to dig all that in. What I'm going to do is just scratch the surface. So we pull away most of the moss to the side like this. This is what you can do for a garden bed that doesn't need heavy work. If it was really boggy, clay soil like it, it just doesn't breathe like you stuck your fingers in and you almost break a fingernail that's where you need to get your shovel your garden fork loosen it up turn it over and break it up that's the starting point of preparing a garden bed and after a couple of years you shouldn't have to be digging it over yes scratch the surface do what i'm doing here look another beetroot put that aside over there just scratch the surface lightly and this is what i mean just scarify, get rid of all these roots. That, that has to be the silver bee from next door. So we do that, like that. See how it's just loosening up the surface, just breaking the surface tension on it. That's all you want to do. And all these bark, all these bark pieces and straw that we have in here, that's beautiful because that's the carbon to feed the microbes, all the, all the living organisms that live in the soil. They will feed off that and that's the food source for them. 
but we're actually going to replenish them as well with a little bit of superfood and black root in a minute. And folks, you don't have to scratch the surface if you don't want to, and you're quite comfortable with the, the level of porosity it has, nice and loose like that. And you really don't even have to take away the mulch. You can actually just leave it as it is. But if you need to, top dress it. And I do recommend that you top dress your garden beds every three to six months. Depends on what you've got growing in it. This is in between the seasons for me. So what I'm going to do here is just put some black grit and superfood on it. This is the superfood. It's a couple of handfuls per square metre, approximately like that. And we go all the way through like this. All the way. Superfood's full of life. It's basically full of microbes, bacteria, good bacteria, and it stimulates the life in the soil, and that's what you want to do. It's not just feeding the plants, it's feeding the earth. If you feed the soil, you feed the plants, and that way you've got a nice balance, and the soil's always rich, and it's not just about, you know, getting the plants to look good. You need to get the soil to feel good too. And what we're doing here is now just sprinkling some black wood over the top, like that. Now you can leave it like that if you like, as I've just done here by spring, uh, putting it on top, but I actually like to scratch it in a little bit just to mix it through, just like that. So do a light blend. So by doing that, you're basically speeding up the process in getting it to activate by adding water. Sorry, I just spotted something. These are our little friends. All right, side note, cockchafers, lawn grubs, curl grubs, these little critters here cause a lot of damage. They eat the roots off your plants and they, look at he's gone back in there, get out of there. He's gonna be fed to the chickens. Now, if you've got one of these, sad to say, there's gonna be lots more because they're not solitary insects or creatures or grubs, whatever you wanna call them. The adult is a dark or a black beetle and they fly around and lay eggs into the soil wherever there's beautiful produce. Now, he's gonna hang around. I'm gonna put him in superfood. feed him afterwards to the chickens. Are there any more? Let's have a quick look. All right. Uh, this is the part where you have to dig to find and get all these roots out. Look at this, I told you. Where there's one, there's more. They don't just lay one egg. Here's one. I'm just gonna collect them. Two. I'm gonna have to keep digging here, folks, to see if I can spot any more, because when you plant, into the soil and you've got these grubs there, they are going to cause a lot of damage. And what happens with this, so if, you have, if you don't know you've got this in your garden bed, what happens is they eat the roots off your plant. So on any given day, hot day, if it's over 25, 30 degrees, you forget to water, the tr normally the tree or plant won't will so much. It'll have a little bit if the soil's slightly too dry. But if you've watered the soil and then you find your plant wilting, still on a hot day, that's the first sign or indicator to tell you that the root system has been compromised. And whether it's a disease or an insect or a grub like this, one of those will cause the damage to the plant. So if your plant's wilting out of the ordinary, even after you've watered it, you need to inspect it. If you find lawn grubs like this, that's the reason of it. And how do you treat it? Here's another one. Look, there you go. Three now. Four I've found. So we've got four in this little spot here, not even a half square metre, 300 by 300. How do you treat it? Chickens. Let them out, <laughs> let them do their job, they'll dig through. So in between this stage, I should let my chickens in here and just turn this into just a, a, a bomb site, but they will clean it out. Unfortunately, I'm not inclined to do that. Some people are happy to do that, that's fine. You can get um, a predator nematodes that you can sprinkle into the garden, put water on them and activate them, and they'll feed off these creatures here. They'll actually clean out the garden bed for you. They're available online, not on our website. We don't sell them because they've got to be bred to order. Um, I'm not sure if there are available still, but check it out. Just Google um, lawn grubs um, online predator nematodes. There are chemicals that you can use, and I'm not going to name them because they are toxic, and I don't recommend you do that. So it's either you build the soil texture, the microbial activity in your soil, build the beneficial creatures that need to help populate the soil and give it the vitality that your plants need, which means what it does, it helps the plants warn off them and fight and be a, a lot stronger in defending itself. They're not gonna win against these ultimately. They will sort of tolerate the cooler weather as far as trying to grow and not wilt, but in the summertime on tomatoes, cucumbers and like that, they get into your plants. And it's not just veggies, folks. 
I've seen Petosporums wilt over. I've seen Fatinia robustas knocked out. I've seen silver birches being destroyed by these little creatures. Yes, trees, trees that are three, four, five metres tall get knocked over because these little buggers get into the root system and just destroy all the little feeder roots. And that way you have no plant left and you're scratching your head trying to work out what's gone wrong. You're not going to know until you start digging. So lawn grubs, cock chafers, uh, curl grubs, whatever you want to call them, they are the culprits to causing a lot of damage in your garden without knowing. And they did start off in the lawns, hence the name lawn grub. Now they've migrated to vegetable grubs and tree grubs. So look out for them in your garden. I'm planting garlic in here. And yes, folks, it's probably three or four weeks, if not more, too late. I normally get it in around March, April. April, April, May, sorry. I'm trying to get my dates right. So April, May. And unfortunately, I'm going to be late. But look, I've planted as late as June and July, and they have grown still. And they're just going to harvest later. I'm just going to be weary of the hot weather in summertime so they don't get knocked out. Now, garlic's going to thrive in this superfood. Our good friends, uh, Will and Linda, if you're watching, eh? Uh, you've put some superfood down on this stuff, and you reckon within a day of planting, everything's just jumped out of the ground. Now, admittedly, these are already sprouting. You can see that. They haven't gone out of control completely. And if you're one to plant a clove like this here, see this clove here? And then send me an email saying, it's got multiple shoots coming out. Why is that happening? It's because this clove is not just one clove. If I can get into it, look, there's another one there. And there's another one there. So make sure you do divide them properly, or otherwise you'll have multiple shoots. Nothing wrong with that, obviously. But if you're looking to try and get the most out of one bulb, you know, break them down as much as you can. So fill around. You can fill the, the little shapes on them. So that's done. They're done. Just pop them into the ground just below the surface like that. They don't have to go too deep and about a hand width apart. That's all you need, 10 centimetres. Now you can dig a little hole and push them in like that with your little finger. You can use a little probe. And by the way, <laughs> the, the pointy side up and the little dry sort of calloused over side on the bottom there goes down. And don't bury them too deep before you finish because otherwise you won't know how far apart you're planting. You can position them like this if you like, then go back and just push them all down. Now I'm only doing one row here. I'm okay with that. If all these grow, I have more garlic than I can poke a stick at. We've gone up to there, and now all you need to do is bring your mulch and bring it back over the top, folks. Just like that. So we've got our superfood down, our black grit down. We haven't turned the soil over all that much. We've just ruffled it up so we can loosen it up. We've gone up to here, and then we give it a light feed with our EK Butch and Liquid Gold. And then we'll come back in a couple of days and see if they've sprouted and see how big they've grown, eh? And there you have it. If you haven't planted your garlic, what are you waiting for? Get out there and plant. Looking for some superfood and black root? Check it out at our, at our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Our autumn clearance sale is going to finish by the end of this season, so don't miss out. Get your specials uh, and save yourself a bundle on some great fertilisers and garden products. Vasiliesgarden.com. Click and collect from Cobec and Lethbridge is available. And 1300 627 374 for all orders. From me, Vasily, Maresi.